What's going on guys, Kevin Cage here with another crypto update. In today's video, we are going to dive into the PAC token. This is one of the most anticipated projects to be launching on Hedera by the end of this month. Alright, let's get into it. I know the Hedera community already is well aware of this and super excited for this launch as am I. So in this video, I wanted to share a few considerations I have and why I'm excited for PAC. We're also going to dive into the tokenomics, its prices at different market caps and all types of things. So I hope you enjoy. And friendly reminder, none of this is financial advice. Anything can happen in crypto. Returns are never guaranteed and there's always risk. So I'm just sharing my personal opinion on this project. I've retweeted things and have covered Hashpack for years. I know I've even said in the past that Hashpack is one of my favorite layer one wallets because of its user interface and transactions on Hedera are a lot more seamless than other chains. So this isn't a paid endorsement. I'm personally excited about the potential of the PAC token when I'm comparing it to other projects on Hedera. So we have Saucer Swap, a very different use case with a total supply of 1 billion tokens. So this is the same total or max supply that PAC has. But when PAC is launching, it's launching at Genesis with a 200 million circulating supply, whereas Sauce already has over 600 million, so over three times more in circulation. So if my analysis or personal speculation about HashPAC, the PAC token launching at a $3 million market cap, even reaching valuations like Sauce today at $78 million or its all-time market cap around $134 million is super exciting, right? As soon as my cursor works, right up there, $134 million. So the Hedera community is well aware of Saucer Swap, a non-custodial crypto trading protocol on Hedera's network available right within HashPAC. Why am I excited about PAC, the token for the HashPAC wallet, Hedera's number one wallet, because they have a large user base. HashPAC accounts for over 90% of Hedera's monthly active users, so we know there's 4 to 5 million plus accounts on Hedera. I know they might not be individual retail investors in all institutions, but the point being is even if it's a smaller amount of monthly active users, having 90% or over 90% is a big deal. In a staggering 99% of Hedera's TVL and transaction volume is enabled by HashPack. 95% of NFT trading on Hedera occurs through HashPack, with integrations reaching 99% of existing decentralized applications on Hedera. Now the point I want to make here is that HashPack is very popular. It accounts for a huge user base of HBAR holders. You can connect or integrate with Wallet Connect. You can use your ledger and connect to HashPack. And there's just a lot of activity overall. They have a mobile wallet, they have a Chrome extension, it's easy to create an account on Hedera, you can create your own seed phrase, you can also actually just use your email to log in and that will actually allow you to log into your own wallet. So one thing is certain, Hashpack has a lot of users and every user that is in Hashpack logging in, looking at their HBAR balance is going to see the pack token on a daily basis, see different promotions and rewards and it's always going to be in front of them. Even HBAR holders that don't necessarily participate in DeFi with Sauce, they're still going to see pack literally everywhere. And looking at Saucer Swap's market cap, at least on CoinGecko here, all the way back in September of 2022. 5.9 million, maybe 6 million. So give or take, from a $6 million market cap after a couple years and during an entire bear market, it has reached $134 million in market cap. So when looking at Sauce, comparing it to HBAR, there's a clear correlation. When HBAR goes up, many of these Hedera tokens can perform even better. And often, when HBAR dumps, many other tokens eventually dump either with it or later. What's interesting is this, so we have Sauce's all-time low on this chart. This is May 31st, up until its all-time high on February 29th. What's interesting here is looking at Sauce's low on this price chart, May 31st, 2023, up until its all-time high, doing well over a 25x return. Looking at those same exact dates with HBAR, how did it perform? Roughly a 200% move. If we went all the way up to its recent swing high, 250%. So HBAR did fairly well, but Sauce did 10 times better. Now, of course, there are other considerations when you're looking at Sauce and the value, when it's holding, when it's dumping, and considering the total value locked. But my expectations for PAC is the better HBAR does, the better opportunity PAC has. If HBAR's price performs bad, or there's bad news, or FUD, or a lawsuit, or who knows what, with Hedera, then HBAR might suffer, and other HBAR tokens could. And if HBAR just chops sideways or up and down at lower levels, it might not be too fun. But imagine if HBAR goes to 20 cents, 40 cents, a dollar plus in the future, that could be absolutely massive for a variety of tokens. Now, based on what we know now, Hashpack tweeted yesterday on April 4th, today is April 5th, that they're going to be launching the PAC token distribution in late April. So I hope there's no delays, but that is what I'm expecting. So hopefully by the end of this month, the PAC token will be live and available per these token listings in Saucer Swap, C14 with the on and off ramps, and a centralized exchange. Which could that be? 
And I'm completely guessing here, perhaps packets listed on MEXC. My only guess is because Sauce or Saucer Swap is already available on MEXC. And this is an older interview from the CEO of Hashpack, Mei Chan, with an interview on the HBAR Bulls YouTube channel. Really good if you want to check it out. I like going through the older information to see what they hit on the roadmap, how much progress have they made, and seeing what they're doing actively today. So we can see Mei Chan, the CEO of Hashpack, over here with the Hashcraft Association, Swirls Labs, and the HBAR Foundation. And this was just back in March. She seems really intelligent. It's a real team. She explained the origins of Hashpack and the progress they've made, so super interesting. She explained her engineering background and the majority of their team members have at least 10 years of experience. I'm trying to keep this video relatively short, but you guys know me, so we're going to go through the market cap circulating supply and the tokenomics as far as I understand them. And we're going to quickly go through the pack token light paper I know next on their roadmap per the recent announcements on Twitter or X is putting out the white paper, so just keep tabs on that. You can follow them on Twitter with notifications on if you're interested. And friendly reminder, if you have any specific questions about Hashpack, you can go right to their website, read their blog, read about the token and the light paper. So the Pack token is the official utility token for the Hashpack wallet, the leading wallet on Hedera. The purpose of Pack is to incentivize and reward users for using Hashpack and to be used for in-wallet redemptions and services. So we'll go through the utility. Here's the Pack token ID to associate right in Hashpack. And the Pack token will have a fixed max supply of 1 billion tokens. At Genesis, or the launch, 200 million pack will enter circulation and will be distributed as follows. So you can go through all this information here and see how they're actually allocating the pack allocation for community, liquidity, marketing, core development, and operations. And the vesting schedule is super clear. So right at Genesis, at launch, it's a 200 million circulating supply. The max cap supply is 1 billion. So it looks like every single year, there's going to be a little bit more released. After year one, we're going to have 400 million. At year two, we're going to have a 600 million circulating supply. So Sauce or Saucer Swap has a supply a little bit above that today. So Sauce has a supply all the way up here over 600 million. When pack launches, it's going to be three times smaller. And this is a total of a six year vesting schedule. So what's the utility of the PAC token? It's a Web3 loyalty token for Hashpack users, and we know that there's a lot of activity on the wallet overall. Those that use in-wallet swaps and secure trade will receive PAC automatically in their wallet. So right away, users of Hashpack are getting exposure to PAC over time. PAC can be spent in-wallet in different places like the App Store, and some items will only be available with PAC. It'll be used for collaborations with the community and other projects. And PAC will be used for future features and services which have yet to be announced. And holders can participate in governance and voting with Hashpack initiatives. And as they say right here, more detail about planned utilities will be published in the near future. I've seen some comments and I don't think people understand Hashpack. Guys, this is not a layer one network. It is not an Oracle solution. It is very simple. It is a wallet token. Being a long-term user of Hashpack, I think this looks completely fine. They've already explained that there's going to be more planned utilities. They've explained that they're going to be launching the white paper. I just see everybody complaining on Twitter. If you don't like a microcap that's launching and it's a wallet token and it seems easy to understand, that's fine. It's not a layer one network with billions of dollars in funding. It's a microcap. Of course, there's risk and there's also potential reward. Every investor has a different risk appetite. You know, some people are just throwing $500 at meme coins. Other people are throwing huge sums of money at more legitimate or multi-billion dollar projects to each their own. I personally really like the risk reward setup with PAC comparing the market cap and comparing it to Sauce and other assets. So I shared this thread back in March going over PAC, just sharing some information and considerations I have. I'm not telling anybody to go buy PAC. It's up to you. I'm just sharing what I'm doing. Everybody has to do their own research. We all have our own opinions. I have my opinions. Sometimes I'm right. Sometimes I'm wrong. I just want to do my best, share quality information, and share my journey. So I'm not here to argue on Twitter with a bunch of people about which coin is better. I'm just sharing my personal beliefs and my information. My primary goal during this bullish cycle, or this next one when we get it, is to comfortably retire my mom. So I made this thread back in March. If you read the light paper, it'll make a lot of sense. But I was just speculating, and this is still a guess with the information I have of PAC's actual launch price and potentially its market cap at launch. I was retweeting a bunch of Hashpack tweets, and this was an INO, an initial NFT offering. So everybody that was able to get the NFTs, and we'll talk about the error that they actually had with the mirror node and the limit rate, which was super frustrating, because I was actually worried I wasn't going to be able to get any NFTs, and I was actually pissed. Long story short, I had my alarm set on my PC. I was trying to get some full sets because I wanted the full distribution of pack when they launch. And I ended up not getting any full sets in the INO and I had to buy at a premium in the marketplace. 
But right away, these all sold out, and the concierge collectibles NFT total was at least over $2 million. And I was frustrated because of the Mirror Node error. It locked me out. I wasn't able to buy sets. The transactions weren't working. I saw a flood on Twitter, people saying, oh, Hedera's network can't even handle this. This had nothing to do with Hedera's network. There was crazy demand, the transactions weren't going through, there was a JSON error, and I was worried I wasn't even going to get any NFT, so I was kind of freaking out, just like most that I saw. And they later shared that they sold out entirely in 22 minutes. They explained what it was with these two mirror nodes, and there was a limit rate issue, so when they switched it, there was a limit rate, and it just caused this crazy effect, where a lot of us weren't able to buy any of the NFTs. So that's an example of a rough start, I know many people are not happy with that whatsoever. I see the usual complaining on Twitter of people complaining about the royalty fee for the NFTs for those that want to buy and sell and do so before the snapshot that we had. And at the end of the day, I want to make sure Hashpack has revenue and is profitable so they can continue to market and grow the pack ecosystem. It's an unfortunate mistake. We can complain about it all we want, but complaining doesn't do anything, and I'm just hoping that Hashpack does a lot better in the future. They put out a transparency report going through this, looking at the requests, explaining the mirror nodes, going through the distribution, and comparing it to other INOs and distributions, so it came out well, I just wish we didn't have that massive mistake. So for the Hashpack Concierge Collection, the average number of NFTs minted per account was 4.5 NFTs. No account got more than 2% of the supply, with the majority 51% having less than 0.15% and 80% having less than 0.75%. So based off the money raised and the average implied price taking the average of the three different NFTs, I am just guessing that it's going to be 1.5 cents or 0.015 per pack. And assuming the average implied price of 1.5 cents and then the Genesis supply at launch of 200 million, that's about a $3 million market cap. So when I posted this thread back in March, those are my current considerations. We'll see if it's even accurate when they launch, but I'd assume it's going to be close to 1.5 cents. So looking at the pack token and assuming the tokenomics are correct and the average implied price launches around 1.5 cents. And again, this is not financial advice. Absolutely anything can happen. We haven't even launched yet. But this would be my guess of the launch price at a $3 million market cap. Looking at the valuation of the token price at different market caps, if we did a massive crash, 0 0.005. If we got up to a $30 million market cap at 15 cents, that would be a 10x or a 900% increase. We know Sauce today is over a $70 million market cap, about $0.35 cents for pack, considering the $200 million supply at Genesis. Looking at a $100 million market cap, that would be over a 30x, and then looking at Sauce, $134 million divided by the $3 million market cap would be over a 40x. So looking at this, these numbers are exciting, especially if pack does have a successful launch or if HBAR really performs well in the future. But I also have to consider the inflation because after one full year, the circulating supply will double from 200 million to 400 million, and that will have an impact on the price potential and the ROI. So that's definitely an important consideration if I'm going to be holding pack long term for much higher prices. And we're going to have to see how the overall market is when pack launches. Will HBAR be going up, which would be a good thing, or is HBAR going to be going down? But we're also at a very interesting point with the Bitcoin price chart if we're going to be drawing a major move to the upside, and potentially other alts are going to have a lagging effect behind it. So with the pack token, it's a bunch of speculation. We know that Sauce did over a 25x return from its low, but on that way, it was a very volatile ride. Pumps, even 70% crashes. But me personally thinking that Pack is going to be launching with a circulating supply initially three times smaller than that of Sauce, and Sauce still did over a 25x return even during that period when HBAR really only went about 250%. We don't know how the Pack price is going to react at launch. Are people going to FOMO in and it just does a 3x return, or are people that were in the NFT offering going to sell after that multiple or sell even sooner and dump their bags to buy back lower? We have no idea what the market's going to do, if it's going to be doing big returns or a big crash. Was the actual failure of the INO or the mistake with the mirror nodes actually a bad thing for PAC? Or could it almost be a good thing or a catalyst in a weird way for people that weren't able to get any NFTs or as many NFTs as they wanted to get a PAC allocation? And could they be buying on the open market seeing PAC at a $3 million, $6 million, $10 million market cap relative to other assets like Sauce with over a $70 million market cap? I'm not sure, and I'm going to be stupid because I'm going to be holding a lot for the long term. I'm going for very big returns, and if we did do a 50 or 90% crash like some projects do at launch, I'm personally going to be buying some. And there are a lot of reasons behind that, one of them being I believe in HBAR. I believe HBAR reaches higher prices and much higher market caps in the future, and I want to have some exposure to other Hedera-based tokens. 
Of course, without sounding like a moon boy, I'm hoping for crazy high valuations. We know Hedera's all-time market cap was 7 billion, and we're still far below that today. So does PAC in theory have 10, 50, or 100x potential if everything goes well? Yes, but nothing is guaranteed. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Huge thanks to all that hit the like button and subscribe. We'll keep tabs on PAC every few months or throughout this year, and I'll catch you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could hit the like button, let me know your thoughts down below, and my link tree is linked in the top of this YouTube video description. With all links, crypto resources, and discounts, I'll catch you in the next one.